Okay, so I is equal to the square root of negative one. The square root of negative one. Now, you've been told your whole math life that you cannot take the square root of a negative number, correct? Because if we think about a square root, like the square root is like this times itself equals that number. So when I do something like, and you don't, don't write this down, but if I did something over here, like the square root of negative, or sorry, the square root of nine, we're thinking what times itself gives you nine, right? And what is that? It's three, right? Uh, but we, we've never been able to do a negative number because if you do like a negative one times a negative one, does that give you a negative one? No, it gives you positive one, correct? And so we had to actually make up these new numbers called complex numbers that allowed us to do the square root of negatives. So the square root of negative one is equal to i. Another word for uh, complex numbers for i is it's imaginary. So some people call these imaginary numbers, okay? I actually don't like that name because imaginary is like, then you'd be like, why are we even learning this? It's not even a real number. It's an imaginary number. It's not that it's not, it's not that it doesn't exist. It's just that it's complex. So I like the term complex number instead of imaginary number, but you will hear some people call these imaginary numbers. And that's kind of what that I stands for. Okay. But like I said, I like to call it a complex number. Okay. More importantly, though, we know that i equals the square root of negative 1. i squared, though, is actually equal to just negative 1. So i squared is actually real. This actually makes sense here. If i is the square root of negative 1, we kind of learned last section that when you square a square root, they cancel each other out, and you're just left with whatever is inside, correct? And so in this case, when we square that square root of negative 1, it just turns into i squared, which is just negative one, okay? So that's kind of the basics here. So now we're gonna do some work with these imaginary numbers, with these complex numbers, okay? We're gonna be simplifying to start here. So to simplify, we're gonna be starting off adding, subtracting, multiplying, all right? We're gonna get to dividing on the next page, but um, to th this page, we're just gonna do adding, subtracting, and multiplying. So adding, you're just going to combine like terms. It's actually really easy, okay? Adding is just combining like terms, just like we've always done, all right? Subtracting, I think, is also going to be fairly easy. We, are, we have to distribute a negative, and then we have to combine like terms. Multiplying is going to be kind of tough, but we'll practice it, and it's doable. You're going to FOIL, and then we're going to turn i squareds into negative ones, and then we're going to combine like terms, okay? Okay, so we'll go through all three of these on this page. But lastly, for all three, always put your answers in the form of A plus BI. So you put the regular number first, and you actually put the I in the back because it's a complex. It's like not a real number. We put it in the back of the, the expression, okay? Okay, so let's try this out. The first four should be really easy here, but we'll do the first two together. All right, so number one, we first of all, when we have a negative here, we distribute the negative. When you distribute a negative, everything kind of changes here. So this is going to become plus 6 plus 3i. So all I've done there is distribute the negative into that, excuse me, second parentheses. The first parentheses stayed the same because there was no negative in front. And now I'm going to combine like terms, okay? Ahora necesitamos combinar los términos similares, okay? So, we have negative 5 and positive 6. So, negative 5 and positive 6 to me makes positive 1. And then we have 5i, positive 5i and positive 3i. It's going to make 8i. That's it. Done. Easy. What's up, Daniel? So the I is connected to the number that's um, next to it? Yeah, Daniel said the I is connected to the number that's next to it. I would say yes, yeah. And I think of it kind of like, just like think of it like you do X's, right? Like 5X plus 3X, that's going to give you 8X, correct? So 5I plus 3I is going to give you 8I. What's up, Daniel? Yeah, well, looking at it that way, what's the difference between an I and an X? 
So Daniel's next question for those of you at home was, what's the difference then between an I and an X? Okay, and here's what I would say. X, remember, is a variable. That's the, like the big thing. X can be anything. X could be five, X could be negative two, okay? I is actually not a variable. It's always the square root of negative one. That's always what it represents. Now, in terms of like what we're actually doing here today, on especially these adding and subtracting ones, is, does it act any different than an X? I would say no, okay? So yeah, if it acts like an X, I say treat it like an X, right? If you treat it like you treat my ex, you stock it on Facebook and make sure it's not going out with anybody hotter than you, right? No, just kidding. Ah, that was a joke. Um, but it, no, we just combine like terms just like it was an ex. So Daniel, honestly, for like these ones, you can really think of it just like it's an ex. The only other thing I would say is like, normally if, if that was an 8x, we'd probably write this as 8x plus 1, the order. On these ones, we always put the i out back, so it would be 1 plus 8i. So that's another difference, but... Not a big difference, right? Okay, so let's check out number two. Number two is actually even easier because it's adding in between. Um, we do not need to distribute anything. We're just going to combine like terms right away. So I have a negative six here. I have a positive five there. So let's combine to make negative one. I have a negative 4i here. I have a positive 5i there. So that makes a positive 1i. I'm actually just going to put positive i. If you wanted to put negative 1 plus 1i, um, I think that's fine as well. But if you just think back to what Daniel was saying, like, is there, like, what about if it was an x, right? So if it was 1x, wouldn't we normally just put x? We probably would, correct? It's not that 1x is wrong, it's not that 1i is wrong um it's just that we don't really need it okay um let's go ahead and try out numbers three and four we'll go over them in like two minutes here All right, so let's go over numbers three and four here. <clears throat> All right, so number three, no distributing necessary. Uh, so I'm just going to combine like terms. So these ones make negative three, and then the i's, I get positive four i. Negative three plus seven gives me positive four i, okay? 
All right, this one here, I need to distribute this negative. So I get a negative seven plus five I. This one I get five minus, and I'm actually gonna call this one one I just to kind of help me out here. So if you're having trouble with that one, just remember it's a one I. So now I combine my uh, regular numbers now. So five minus seven is negative two. Negative one I plus five I is gonna give me plus four I. That's it. All right, so those are easy, right? Definitely we can get those ones correct on any quiz or test, I would hope. Now, next up, we're gonna move on to multiplying. How do I know that these are multiplying? Well, these are parentheses with no plus, no minus in between, correct? So if there's nothing in between the parentheses, that's when we're talking about multiplication, okay? So make sure we kind of, we, we make a note here that this means multiply when there's nothing in between them. And for multiply, we're gonna need to FOIL, okay? You guys remember FOIL? Have we done FOIL this year? I don't even think we have. Okay. Well, what does FOIL stand for? It stands for first, outer, inner, and last. First, outer, inner, last, okay? Or does some of you use the box to multiply? What's up? Yes, it is also the box. So why don't, why don't I do this? I'll show both methods because either one's okay, okay? So yeah, if you use the box instead, I'll go ahead and you would set that up like this, negative four uh, minus eight I, negative seven, minus seven I. Yeah, the box is fine. You know what, I like the box. Let's just use that. I'll show the foil afterwards, but. So the box there, you, you put one of the parentheses up there and then one of them along the side. You do make sure you're really careful about whether each thing is positive or negative. That's very important. And then we just multiply to fill out the box. So this one's like, uh, negative seven times negative four is positive 28. Negative seven times negative eight I is positive 56 I. Negative four times negative seven I is positive 28 I. So you can see that those, those two corners should have the eyes attached. And then this last box down here is positive 56i squared. Okay. Now, if we look back at the instructions here, which I'm going to do in a second, let's look back at the instructions for multiply. It says FOIL. Okay, I'll put here if you want to add here or the box. Then it says turn I squared into negative one. Then combine like terms, okay? So let's go back down here. I only have one I squared, it's in the bottom right box, it's usually gonna be there, okay? And so when I write this out, I'm gonna write 28 plus 56I plus 28I but I'm gonna write plus 56 times negative one. So the only thing I changed was that I squared that I had, I changed it into a negative one. What was the I squared doing to 56? It was multiplying, correct? And so now, what is the negative one doing to 56? It's multiplying. Now, what do I do first? Do I multiply or do I add according to PEMDAS? Multiply first. So the first thing I should do is multiply negative 1 times 56. Well, that's just going to be negative 56. 
Now, if you guys want to know a shortcut that a lot of people do with these, whenever they have an I squared, they just take the number that it's attached to and switch it to like the opposite and then the I squared goes away. So if we have 56 I squared, that's going to turn into negative 56. And if we have negative 56 I squared, that's going to turn into positive 56, okay? So we're going to see that shortcut as we go along. For now, I would say just show it with that negative one right there, okay? Okay, so now we need to combine like terms here. All right, so we have 28 and we have negative 56. So what is that? Sheesh. It is negative 28. Is it? Yes, definitely negative 28. Michelle with the excellent subtraction skills. Okay, now for our eyes, we have positive 56 and positive 28. So that sounds like 84i. There we go. Gosh, dang it. All right, I'm gonna change, let's change uh, these over here. So for number six, can we make this a positive? Let's make that a positive, oh, you guys can't see that in here. Let's make that a positive five I on that second parentheses. And then let's do the same thing over here. Let's make the second parentheses positive. Can you guys modify that negative five plus five I on number six? Because I wanna show you what happens when that's a positive right there. And let's do the same thing for number eight. So negative two plus three I. Okay, so let's go ahead and use the box here on number six. So then we have a uh, <clears throat> negative six minus three I up here, and then negative five plus five I down here. If I put the negative five plus 5i up top, that would have been fine if you switch those up. All right. Ahora tenemos que multiplicar. To fill out the box, we need to multiply. So negative 5 times negative 6 is a positive 30. Negative 5 times negative 3i is a positive 15i. Negative 6 times 5i is a negative 30i. And then 5i times negative 3i is negative 15i squared. All right, if I don't want to write all that over again, I can actually just, why don't we just work on this one right here? The I squared is really what we need to kind of mess with first. So that, remember, is going to turn into negative 15 times negative 1 because we're turning I squared into negative 1. So what's that one going to turn into? Is positive 15, right? So like I said, when we had 56i squared, that becomes negative 56. Now we have negative 15i squared, that's going to become positive 15. So you should never have an i squared in your answer. Like you are going to have i in your answer, but not i squared. The i squared should go away and then kind of change the sign of whatever it's attached to. So now when I show all my like terms here, I got 30 plus 15i minus 30i. And then this one is our plus 15 for that I squared term. We'll finish up by combining like terms. So we get 30 plus 15 is going to give me 45. 15i and negative 30i gives me negative 15i. So 45 is technically the real part, and the negative 15i is the imaginary part, or the complex part. 
All right, let's try out seven and eight now. Once again, for number eight, go ahead and change that uh, second parentheses to say negative two plus three i, so we can practice with that. So, but let's do number seven and eight here on your own, and then we'll go over the answers together. Okay, ready, go. All right, if you're finishing up, I went ahead and showed my work here so you can check your answers against mine. And if you got something wrong, you can check your work against mine. I think that as uh, a lot of you guys get good at this, there's probably some steps you can skip along the way. Um, I kind of, I definitely don't skip steps when I'm showing notes, of course, because um, I'm kind of showing this to everybody, right? So. Um, my, my general rule on skipping steps is I kind of, I mostly trust people. So if you know what you're doing and you're getting the correct answers, then I think that that's okay. I think that's why practice and like uh, our, you know, our in-class practice is so important to make sure that you're doing it correctly. And if you're doing, if you're skipping steps and doing it correctly, I'm okay with that. If you're skipping steps and doing it wrong, I would say don't skip steps. Why don't you show everything and then and make sure you're getting it right, okay? But I always show all the steps because I don't want to skip any. Since since some people don't like doing that, I want to just show it to everyone, okay? All right. So we'll move on in one minute here.
All right. Uh, so we're going to move on. I did record this, so um, or I am recording this, so I'll post it on the uh, Schoology this afternoon. So if you need to go back and, and watch anything, you certainly can. Uh, but let's move on to division here. So division gets a little complicated here, um, or it's a little complex, if you will. Ha ha ha. So if you just have bi on bottom, so it's just, if you just have a number and i on the bottom, we're going to multiply the numerator and denominator by i only, okay? That's what we're always going to do. And then we're just going to see what happens, okay? If we have a plus bi on bottom, so if you have like a regular number and then also a complex number, like numbers 11 and 12 here, you see how we have kind of both pieces. In those cases, we're going to multiply by something called the complex conjugate. The complex conjugate is the half opposite of a plus bi, which would be a minus bi. So we're going to keep the first term, but change the sign in between, okay? So we'll get to that in a minute. Let's start off here, though, with number 9. So when we just have the i on bottom, we're just going to multiply the top and the bottom by i only, okay? Now, we have a negative in front of this fraction. Whenever we have a negative out front of the fraction, I always like to move that up top. So I'm going to call this negative 2i on top. On bottom, it looks like I have 5i squared because I have 5i times i, right? Wait a minute. What do we do with i squared? Turn it into negative 1 and multiply it is correct. So... I'm going to call this negative 2i over 5 times negative 1. So I'm going to call that negative 2i over just negative 5. Well, now, what's a negative divided by a negative? It's a positive. So I'm just going to... Um, Turn that into a positive 2i over 5. So our goal on these is to, we don't, we don't like i in the denominator for whatever reason. They don't like that. So whenever I have an i in the denominator, this is kind of how I move it to the numerator, okay? But I have to do the same thing to the numerator and denominator. I think I shared that SpongeBob meme with you guys on Thursday, right? Whatever you do to the denominator, you got to do it to the numerator. All right, so let's try out number 10 then. So for number 10, same thing. I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by i. So on top then I have negative 9i. Abajo tengo 10 negativo y cuadrado. Or in English, negative 10 i squared. Well, I should not leave uh, i squared in my answer. So I'm actually going to change that to a negative 1. So now I have negative 9i over negative 10 times negative 1. At the bottom then we can turn into positive 10. And now I no longer have the negative divided by a negative. Now it's just a negative divided by a positive, so I have to keep the negative up there in this case. <clears throat> All right, let's do one more here, and then uh, number 12, we'll save it for tomorrow. Okay, so number 11, though, I want to do this one today. So in this case, we have 1 minus 3i in bottom, okay? So whenever we have that, like a, a real and imaginary part here, one like 1 minus 3i, we have to multiply by the complex conjugate, I said, right? So the complex conjugate for this one would be 1 plus 3i. So I keep the first term the same but I switch the sign in the middle. That's the conjugate. So it's not the full opposite. That's why I called it like the half opposite because the one is the same. The three I is opposite. 
Well, if I do that to the denominator, I have to do that to the numerator as well. All right. Now, in the numerator, I have to distribute that 8i, okay? We're going to distribute. So that's going to give me 8i plus 24i squared. On bottom, I got to do a box. Box it up. But I got good news for the box on these conjugates, okay? Whenever you're multiplying conjugates and you use the box, take a look at this. Positive 3i and negative 3i, they actually cancel each other out. So I'm not even going to write them down in my next step. That should actually always happen when you use the conjugate. Our goal here is to get the i uh, out of the denominator. And so do you see how doing that and having those two terms cancel is actually going to uh, accomplish that goal of getting the i out of the denominator? The reason why is the only thing left we have is an i squared. But don't we always say we can change the i squared into a negative 1? And so this is actually down here 1 plus 9. Negative 9i squared, we know, it turns into positive 9. Well, we actually also have an i squared up top, so I'm going to do the same thing up there. 24 times negative 1. So up top, that's going to give me... I'm going to rearrange it, so I'm going to put the negative 24 first and then the 8i out back. And I'm going to put the 10 on bottom, 1 plus 9. I'm almost done, but in this case, I have one more step left, okay? Last step. If I look at all three of these numbers, I'm going to put like a heart around them. If I can reduce all three of those numbers by the same number, if I can divide them all by the same number, I need to do that. In this case, I can divide them all by two. In some cases, you won't be able to, but in this case, we are. So I'm going to draw my heart because I heart complex numbers, and we're going to divide all of these by two. And that's going to be our answer. I just took that negative 24 plus 8i over 10. And on a fraction, if you can divide everything in the fraction by the same number, you should always do that to reduce the fraction, OK? If you can divide two of the numbers but not the third one, don't do it. It's got to be all three or nothing. Got it? OK. All right, we'll save number 12 for tomorrow. So that'll be our little warm up and then we'll do a puzzle piece. So make sure you save these notes as, save them as, and then save them as your name so it saves your stuff. I wanted to show you guys, I have a good meme for this one actually, that I actually created myself. So I'm very proud of it. So make sure you compliment me in the chat. I just need to find it here. It's in my memes folder, but... Um, yeah, it's a big memes. There it is. So we know we're talking about complex numbers here. And so Drake would say, we got all these imaginary conjugates 
you still can't be real. All right, good stuff. I made that one myself. Thank you, thank you. All right, um, so once again, if you missed anything, you can, I'll, I'll post that video this afternoon of the notes, okay? And then we'll finish up that last problem in the notes tomorrow and submit them, and we'll do a puzzle piece tomorrow as well. Uh, good job today, guys, and uh, I'll stick around a couple minutes for questions, but if you don't have any, then uh, thank you for your attendance and participation, and we'll see you tomorrow. All right, and if you guys are packed up, you're good to go. Thank you, guys. Good job. All right, see ya. All right, see ya.